All right, so in this unit so far, we've been studying conic sections. We've so far looked at parabolas. We've also looked at ellipses. And now we've just started looking at hyperbolas. I had you fill out a vocabulary sheet on hyperbolas if you want to keep that handy during this video. Not a bad idea because I'm going to be graphing hyperbolas, so it's nice to know all the different pieces of them. When we graph hyperbolas, there's a couple things we're going to do. I have them all set up right here for you. We're going to find the vertex. Um, as in parabolas, circles, and ellipses, our vertex is going to be hk still. h again will be with the x, k again will be with the y. We're going to find our a and b. So one thing to keep note of was with an ellipse, we were adding. When we're adding, order doesn't matter. So we can't distinguish between a and b by determining which goes first and which goes second. So with an ellipse, we always said a was the bigger one. a was greater than b. With a, per, um, uh, with a hyperbola, a will always come first. Because as you can see here, or on that formula sheet that you have, hyperbola subtract, and order matters with subtraction. So it's not always A is bigger or B is bigger, it's A comes first. So I'm going to put that on here. A will come first. All right, so we're going to use A and B to find our vertices again. We will use B to plot the endpoints of our conjugate axis. Remember, the conjugate axis, however, is going to be an imaginary axis. We're not really going to draw it in. Then we'll draw a box using our endpoints and draw in our diagonals. Those will be our asymptotes, and we'll use all that to draw a hyperbola. So let's look at the first one. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find hk. I can see that it's x plus 1, which was originally x minus a negative 1. So I'm going to have an h value of negative 1. I'm going to have a k value of negative 2. This is going to be my center. Center. It's kind of messy. Then I'm going to find my A and my B. <clears throat> Excuse me. A is going to come first, so I can see that since 9 comes first, A squared is 9, therefore A is the square root of 9 or 3. B is the square root of 16 or 4, so notice A is not the bigger number. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plot my center. One, two, back one, down two. From that point, I'm going to use my A um, to find my transversal axis. When I use my A, uh, I first have to determine which A it's going to open. Since it's an X squared, I know it's going to open like this. So on my list up above, I should have said something about finding my orientation. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and go over three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to use the B to draw my conjugate axis. Go up, one, two, three, four. Go down, one, two, three, four. I'm going to draw an imaginary box. And the goal of the purpose of this box is to give me my diagonals for it. So I'm going to draw those in with imaginary lines as well. These are going to be the asymptotes of my hyperbola I'm about to put in. And then the last thing I can do, I can take my vertices and asymptotes are going to be lines that we get really close to but never actually touch. So I'm going to get nice and close to my asymptotes but not actually touch them. The solid blue line then is going to be my hyperbola. <clears throat> there is one more example. There's two examples in here, so let's look at the second one. This one I have the y squared coming first instead of the x squared, so I have the y squared on top of the a. That tells me it's going to open vertically. So notice it's almost like it's the opposite of what you would expect uh, based on what you know about a parabola. I'm going to again find my center, my h comma k. h is always going to be with the x, remember? So I'm going to have 2 comma 4 for my center. And I need to find my a value. My a is going to be my vertices. So a is um, squared is 4 because a again is going to always come first. So if a squared is 4, that means a is 2 and b is 3. So again, it doesn't matter which is bigger or which is smaller. It's all about which comes first and a always comes first. I'm going to plot my center. I'm going to go over 2 and up 4. And now I'm going to use A and I'm going to go up 2 and down 2 since I open vertically. So I'm going to go up 2 and I'm going to go down 2. 
and then I'm going to go right three, and I'm going to go left three. I will draw my imaginary box. And then I will draw in my diagonals. And then I will use my vertices to go ahead and draw in my hyperbola. So here's my first vertex. And here's my second. And that's it for drawing my hyperbolas. In class, we will look at an example together. And then I will have you guys do some practice with this.